I'm Norman Plumley alongside Chris Blevins. Welcome back to Gallenberg Pittman High School. 14 to 7, a barn burner of a ball game here tonight at Gallenberg Pittman High School as the Highlanders lead the Pigeon Forge Tigers. Chris, we talked about it in the pregame. We were we came into this broadcast expecting to see a big air game from Gallenberg Pittman. They threw us a curveball and they put it on the ground and was successful. Yeah, I think that definitely was a predetermined thing for took the field tonight. We had a lot of people running the ball. I mean, Aki was the big carry man there with seven carries for 15 yards. We also had Hammond for 21 yards and a touchdown. Uh, I think they really thought about this, but I think they might switch it up here in the second half. Give Schultz a chance to throw the ball. I mean, he's impressive back there. He hasn't thrown probably, but I think he's only threw two passes tonight for about 21 yards, so he's got a lot more to show out there. We'll talk a little bit more about the Claybos Express Shine Car Wash statistics of the first half in just a minute. Uh, let's talk about momentum real quick. Pigeon Forge comes out, a couple of touchdowns in the first quarter, and then all of a sudden, uh, or rather Gallenberg Pittman, Pigeon Forge comes back, the 97-yard kickoff return, and from that point on, it was an entirely different first half. Oh, it sure was. I mean, Profit there, we're talking about the 97-yard kick return. Profit really set the momentum up. He streaked down the sideline there. Uh, he was catching punts. He was doing a lot of different things, but I really believe on this next half here, Pigeon Forge don't need to change anything except keep on on defense and keep going after it on offense taking right. chances, and we'll see what we can do with this game just being 14-7. to 7. I think it's going to be a great one here at the finish. Let's take a look real quick at the uh, scoring recap in the first quarter. It was all, or in the first half, it was all in the first quarter. Gallenberg Pittman back-to-back -back touchdowns. The first one, they go five plays, 35 yards. It took them a minute 17 at the 410 mark, and Ethan Estabrook, uh, an 18-yard pass reception from Schultz, and GP goes up 7 nothing With 135 to go uh, in the first quarter, Five plays, 27 yards, took a minute 39 off the clock, and Pierce Hammonds dives in from three yards out to put GP up 14 to nothing. Then the 97-yard return kickoff by Quentin Profit. That came with 118 to go in the first quarter. Great defensive second quarter, but no scoring, and that brings us to where we are right now, 14 to 7. Chris? And let's do not forget about Bob Monte there, Pigeon Forge. Right. I thought he did a great job of controlling the offense. I thought at first when he was throwing the ball, he did a good job. Then they started handing it to him there. He had the last four plays there. He ran were all for runs there. He had about, about 11 yards on the ground there, but a couple of those were big first downs, like a fourth goal, right. or fourth and one. I think Bob Monte is the controller of the offense there, Pigeon Forge, to see what he can do in the second half. Well, right now we'll take a break at the halftime show. When we return, third quarter action, 14-7. to 7. It's the Highlanders over the Tigers. Stay with us. We're back in a moment. Welcome back to Gallenberg Pittman High School, 14 to 7 at the intermission. Third quarter about to get underway. Norman Plumley and Chris Blevins, glad that you are joining us here on Charter Channel 180. Here's the kick fielded at about 32, up to the 40, maybe the 42. It as GP, one. yeah, he did. <laughs> Not sure why they pooch kicked that one on that play. I mean, they've got good defense. Uh, I don't know why they pooch kicked that one. Highlanders will start things in the third quarter. First and 10 from their own 42. Well, let's see if Schultz puts it in the air on this first play here. He's back in the shotgun. So they talked about it at halftime, so we'll see some more in the air plays here. But Aki in the backfield. Schultz fakes the pitch, keeps it himself up near midfield, and he's into Tiger territory at the 49. So a gain of nine yards. That was a big play right there. I mean, I thought he was going to go through the air, but he took off and ran with it right there. What a really good play there. Another Krispy Kreme donut. First down. Or, I'm sorry. Krispy Kreme is our, yeah, first down. Yeah, I had it right. You did. Schultz in the gun. This time he will give it. It's to Hammonds, and he's met at the line of scrimmage, but surges forward for maybe a yard. 
mark it at the 48, so we'll call that. Two runs right out of the gate, one quarterback run, then one back to Hammonds there. I think this might be the game plan, Norm. I think they're just wanting to run the ball, make this a long game, but we'll see. So down to the 48. First and 10 for the Highlanders. Let's see if Pigeon Forge can get a big stop here, uh, and get it going here with this game still being right really close here. I see what happens on defense. They'll keep it on the ground and get it in. There's a flag on the play in the uh, backfield. I think that probably was a hold right there, even though Aki got it outside. I think you're going to see it come back here on GP. Yep. Aki got it inside the 45, but it's going to come back. You know, Aki's got a really, really good uh, run about it. He got a big toughness for him, so he can really run it up through there, but uh, bad penalty there. But it helps Pigeon Forge out there a little bit. Um, we'll see what happens on this next possession. Moves it back to the Gatlinburg Pittman 40. Where it'll be first and 20. Check that first and, oh yeah. Yep. The shotgun again. One running back in the backfield, Aki. Here's a man in motion. The pitch goes to him. It's snuffed out. Big defensive play that time by the Tigers. That was number 37, Garrett Pippen again on the on the stuff there. They tried to run the reverse there with Estabrook, and they just stuffed it all the way. Great play by Pitcher Forge's defense. A loss of three back to the 37. And that'll bring up second and 23. I'll tell you what, Pippen is all over the field for Pigeon Forge. He's doing a really good job. I mean, he, he is in every play, on, almost running on every tackle. So uh, I would suggest they don't run the ball near him. Schultz out of the gun, second 25, actually. Here's a pass play, almost a one-handed grab by Hammonds, but off his fingertips, incomplete. That would have been a spectacular catch, and honestly, Schultz would have been had his third uh, pass there that would have been completed, but he just could not get it in his fingertips, but it would have been a great catch with a one-hander, but he didn't, couldn't pull it in. So third and 25. What do you bet we see a pass here, Norm? <laughs> Maybe not. Uh, well, the odds are, but it wouldn't surprise me if they ran it. <laughs> Uh-oh, here we go. Aki in the backfield, shotgun again. Let's see if they go safe or go on the air. They ran that play a bunch of yep. times there. It's almost like they're trying to run that screen pass every time. Uh, I think Pigeon Ford is picking up on that. They got a touchdown on that one on the first half, but that screen was not working there, and I think Pippen almost was in there again, but broke it up here to make it fourth down here. So six plays on their first possession, second half, and Gallenberg Pittman will punt it away with 9.29 to go in the first or the third quarter. Then we got Profit and Ward back here again. I, I don't see if they give it to Chancellor those are guys. I don't think they will, but we'll see what happens. You got a boomer off. Yep, pretty good one and a fair catch back at the 25, and that's where Pigeon Forge will put it in play. Great job by Profit there. and Caught the ball, secured it for Pigeon Forge. Here comes the Pigeon Forge offense. Let's see what we got on here. I mean, um, Biamonte started off the end of the first half there running the ball. Let's see if he starts running the ball here. Are they going to air it out here? Get Profit a reward here on the first play. So Biamonte, your quarterback, number four. And he'll bring him to the line. The Tigers' first possession, second half. Receivers each side. They'll keep it on the ground with the big fullback, and they'll move it well, right back to the line of scrimmage. So we'll call it no gain, second and ten. Jacob McCarter there on that run. Um, they've used him a couple times throughout the game here, so we'll see what happens on this next play. You what, Norm, the fans are really here tonight, really supporting their teams on both sides. Of, uh, it's really exciting to be here tonight and watch these two teams play. Uh, I know these guys are really fighting hard out there. You know, most any high school football game is well attended, but a, a rivalry like this, it's really great to be in this environment with a packed stands on both sides. Yes, sir. Second and ten, man in motion. Bayamani's going to keep it himself, and he's going to move it up near the 30. Bob might have been fumbled. I believe it was. And Gallenberg-Pittman recovers. 
That's what happens when you run the ball with your quarterback a little too much. Sometimes that ball tends to come out. They're not used to holding so tight on that football. Uh, Gallup Pittman did a good job of really trying to strip it out. Bob Monte, if he's going to run, he's got to hold on the ball. But big, big turnover and a good game for Gallup Pittman to go up here, uh, down here in Tiger territory. First and 10 from the Pigeon Forge 31. The Highlanders have it in a flag before they get the playoff, and that's going to go against GP. We've seen a few of those plays tonight, Norm. Right when they get up the field, you got to, got to be careful when you get started here just to kill your possession here and back it up here on your first play as soon as they get on the field. Backs it up five, so it'll be first and 15. Pigeon Forge's defense has been here all night. The unfortunate part, they're not on the other five-yard line now. They're on the Tigers, their own territory going up here. So they got to make sure they stand their ground here. From the 31, Schultz out of the gun. Man in motion. And that's going to be down to the 30-yard line is Aki as he goes in motion and gets the little pitch behind the line of scrimmage. They've been running that ball to Aki. I don't think they're going to quit. Six-yard gain. Second and nine from the 30. Fakes that same play from the last one. That and was Hammonds and yeah. there. Yep, Hammonds. That was a two change up there. Hammonds is fast. I mean, I think they kind of caught everybody off guard. We almost missed it there, but that was Hammonds on the Wildcat there for maybe a game. Of Two, gain, three. gain of five, actually, down to the 25, yep. So that brings up third and four. Schultz back at quarterback. Hammonds out to the lot. Aki in the backfield. They'll fake it, and Schultz will keep it and may have gotten inside the 25, but I don't think so. Nope. So no gain. That's going to bring up a fourth down. What a big stand by Pigeon Forge here. Yep. They probably will go for it here. Looks like they're keeping the offense on the field. Let's see if Pigeon Forge can get a big stop here or if Gatler Pittman can push it through here and uh, get another score on the board. But big, big play coming here. I bet we're hit. Here's some noise here, Norm. Schultz out of the gun with one back. Twins to the right. Looks like he may be trying to call, uh, get him to jump. We'll see. Five seconds on the play clock. They yep. figure it out. Three, two, timeout, timeout. Gallenberg Pittman, timeout. So 6.41 to go, third quarter, 14 to 7, still our score. GP up over Pigeon Forge, a commercial break, and we're back. Forty-one to go. Fourth and four. A big fourth down play for GP early here in this third quarter. Here comes Aki on the toss. Yep. Aki's going to get close. I think they might have stopped him. Hard to see from our vantage point, but it is going to be close if he didn't get it. Oh. Well, he must have made just enough as he picks up another Krispy Kreme Donuts first down. Good play by Aki there getting that wide. I wasn't sure if he got that. It's kind of hard to see, but uh, man, what a big pickup on fourth down and pigeon forward is heartbreaker right there. We'll see what we can do. He made it to the 20, so that's a gain of five. Here's Aki again, and this time he's met just behind the line of scrimmage. Might have urged, uh, edged forward to the original line. And he did, so second and ten. Still Pigeon Force can try to hold him here. I mean, GP had a good fourth down play there. Let's see if they can still hold him to a field goal. I'm not sure if they even will use a field goal kicker. They'll probably go for it again, depending on what the yardage is. But we'll see what happens here on second down and ten here. Six minutes to go in the third quarter. Aki lined up left this time, and here he comes in motion. And the Wildcat. Hammond's on the Wildcat up the middle. Gets down to about the 16, maybe the 17. Back by Reed. Yeah, we'll call it the 16, so that's a gain of four. 
That's two Wildcat plays in this possession here. They've got on Hammonds there, changing it up, but he's doing a good job of putting it up in there. Third and six for the Highlanders. Here it comes again, another Wildcat play for Hammonds. Takes yep. the handoff. He's got a TD. Hammonds goes 16 yards out of the Wildcat, fakes that little pitch to the man in motion, and scampers 16 yards for the touchdown. I think GP found something they liked right there at that Wildcat. That's what they were looking at. I think Pigeon Ford was taking a little bit off guard, weren't ready for it, and he they just kept on pounding until Hammonds got one up there on the left side and ran it right in for a touchdown. Uh, that's going to bring up 20-7 to seven here at 5 minutes and 20 seconds to go in the third quarter. And here comes the field goal. Kick is up. Kick will be good, 21-7, 5.20 to go in the third quarter. This is also brought to you by Carl Hapter Furniture Store in Pigeon Forge. Uh, make sure you go down and see that destination in downtown. Get your furniture needs. We'll take another quick break. Back with more third quarter action in just a minute. Mmm, just look at all those freshly made Krispy Kreme donuts. I'm sure it makes you want one or a dozen right now. So come visit our locally owned and operated Krispy Kreme Donuts in Pigeon Forge. Our Krispy Kreme Donuts are made fresh daily, our service is fast and friendly, and the taste will put a smile on anyone's face. Krispy Kreme is a fundraising favorite, so call us today to help support your school or community fundraising efforts. Our delivery truck is there when you need us. Krispy Kreme Donuts on the Parkway in Pigeon Forge. 520 to go following the TikTok attack service touchdown from Hammonds for GP puts the Highlanders up 21 to 7. Well, let's see if we can get an answer from Pigeon Forge there. That was a big drive by Gallagher Pittman. They kept it on the ground again, still nothing in the air, but uh, let's we'll see what happens here on this potential Pigeon Forge. It's the kick, I think, might have went. Yep, went out of bounds about the 20 yard line. Gonna be a flag there. Let's see if they get, get the field position here for Pigeon Forge on the kickoff. I think Norman last possession pigeon forge uh, by Monte fumbled the football. Let's see if they keep it in his hands. Let him keep running the ball. Or they keep on spreading it out and get it back out here to profit or reward out here and see what they can do with the football. Now they gotta have to get some scores here. Get this game closer with 520 left in the third quarter. Tigers will start this possession on their own 35. Down by a couple of scores. We saw this play earlier, Norm. Play action play here first down. Let's see if we see it again. A quick pass. Nothing much there. That was C.J. Dreyer on yep. the catch there for the Tigers. Uh, quick pass, get that ball out of his hands. That was a, a pretty good play. We've got an injured Tiger down on the field, so medical personnel will attend to him for just a few minutes. While they do so, another uh, – Shout out, another thank you to our presenting sponsor, Krispy Kreme Donuts, on the Parkway in Pigeon Forge, hot and ready. Look for the hot light sign daily from 6 to 11 a.m. and also from 6 p. until 10.30 p.m. Also, Buddy's Barbecue, we talked about them as they feed us each and every game. Special thanks to the folks at Buddy's. They're in Sevierville, 705 Winfield Dunn Parkway, right across from Lowe's. Next time you have a special event, maybe an office party, family reunion, tailgating, it's that time of year. Birthdays, company picnics, weddings, keep them in mind. They also deliver for large orders and events. Call them at 865-428-5001. At Sevier County Electric System, we know that when the power goes out, it's important to you to have power restored as quickly as possible. That's why we've introduced the Power Action Line. As soon as you call the Power Action Line from a phone associated with your electric service, we know immediately that your power is out. The Power Action Line lets us answer up to 1,200 calls per hour, so we can make sure and identify all outages, even after major storms. We track those outages through our integrated mapping system, which provides our operations center a better understanding of where the affected areas are located and predicts probable starting points that helps our crews begin looking for the problem. Our whole goal is to get your power back on as soon as possible. We'll even call you back to make sure your service has been restored. At Sevier County Electric System, we want to take care of our customers, and that's what we do every day. Sevier County Electric System, we are the power behind our community. Just call 865-774-6300. It's 
So the injured player carted off the field, not the result we wanted to see, and we're pretty sure it was number 73 for Pigeon Forge, Arturo Jimenez. So our prayers and thoughts are with him. That's, like I said, you, you never want to see that. So we hope that's best case scenario. Here's Pigeon Forge, second and nine. Keeps it on the ground, moves it up to the 39. That was a big delay there. Let's see if anything changed for Pigeon Forge or GP on that big delay there. See if anything changes in the game plan. Uh, sometimes things like that do change the game, but we'll see. Every time you take a break like that, you never know what could happen back on the field. But let's see what we can happen here. That's a four-yard carry up to the 39. So to bring up third and five. Well, the one thing now is time is ticking. Pigeon Forge is down two scores now. They need to get something positive here on this possession. Twins left. They'll keep it to the big fullback up to the 41. Yep. And McCarter gained maybe a couple on that one. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's that's what they've been doing all night. But again, I think they're going to have to see something different here. I see Biamonte waving some calls off here. Things want to go down the field here. Let's see what happens. So a gain of two to the 41. That's a fourth down situation with about three to go, two or three to go. And right now. He's wanting to go for it. He's waving for it. He's telling him, let's go, let's go. Uh, right now, Pigeon Forge wants to talk about it, a big fourth down play. We'll take a commercial break, and we're back in just a moment. Five Oaks Tires, carrying top name brands, Michelin Tires and BF Goodwrench Tires. Visit fiveoakstire.com. Located on 1425 Parkway, Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, or call Five Oaks Tires at 865 453 3469. Sixteen minutes left to go in this ball game. Four of those here in the third quarter. And Pigeon Forge elects to punt it away on a fourth and three in their own territory. By Monte with a good yep there. Best punt that he's kicked today and gets a huge bounce in their favor. Scooped up at the, about the six yard line. And there goes the return man for Gallenberg Pittman down at about the 10. That was Estabrook on that uh, punt return there with a swarm of Tigers tackling him there. Uh, what a good punt by, by Monte there. And best one he's had all night, a roller. But Estes had to pick it up there. I'm sorry, Estabrook had to pick it up, but Tigers really swarmed him, pinned him back deep here again. So, good punt. Highlanders will start it on their own 12-yard line. 3.46 to go in the third. Let's see if Pigeon Forge can get him a three and out here. Um, looks like we got Schultz there in the backfield and Aki back there. I bet we see a run. There's Aki up the middle. Got yep. a wide open hole. He picks up probably first down there. Definitely a Krispy Kreme donut first down. They're not going to quit running the ball here. I mean, time's on their side. I forgot for Pittman. If they can run the ball like that, it's going to keep on killing that clock. Pigeon Forge is going to have to make sure they get up in those holes and stop those runs so he can get the ball back. That's going to be an 11-yard pickup to the 23. Aki's having a great game. He he has been positive on the all three of his first runs, except for one that was just an even kill there. So keep on handing it off. Here goes Hammonds on the outside to the left. Cuts back on the field, up the middle. He's got some room. He spun down around the 30, 38-yard line there. A big pickup there for Hammonds there. Another Krispy Kreme donut first down. They'll mark it at the 30, we'll call it the 38. So a gain of 15. 15 yep. Gallenberg, Pitt, Gallenberg Pittman moving pretty quick now. Single back. And that's the pitch to Hammond. Hammond up near the 44-yard line. A flag comes in late. Might be a hold right there, which would be great for Pigeon Fours, but they are running it on them right now. Well, I, I said there was a flag. I, maybe it was just my eyes. I thought I saw one, but... Looks like it might be against... Yeah, yeah, yeah there it is. Be against Pigeon Fours. Personal foul against Tigers. Man, big personal foul against the Tigers there. Uh, that's going to move the ball up 15 yards. Let's see where they put the ball. Making it first and 10, Gallenberg Pittman. It's going to be 
Pittman. Another Krispy Kreme first down for Galbert Pittman on that penalty play there by Pigeon Forge. It's going to put it all the way down to the Tiger 41. It's not looking good for Pigeon Forge. Those are normal. We, get, we need to see them do something here on defense to get a stop. But Galbert Pittman's putting them all on the line. They are putting them all up there. Pitch to Aikie. There's another flag comes in. Now that's going to be a hold on Gatlinburg Pittman. That's going to bring the ball back there after that 15-yard penalty. They're going to lose five here on GP here on that hold. Not sure they called that on, but man, I tell you what, Norm, they put a lot of people up there. Almost they were just telling them they're going to run the ball. So yep. obviously they're going to try to kill the clock here and get as many yards as they can. I don't know what Pigeon Forge is going to do except for trying to stop them. So after the penalty, it'll bring up we'll replay first down, but it moves it back to the 49. Let's see if Pigeon Force can get a turnover here. Just go after and strip that ball and get an interception. We'll see what happens here. Schultz in the shotgun. Fakes the give, keeps it himself. He got tripped up a little bit. Schultz did. He faked that give, but then he got tripped up and fell. I don't, he might go back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, brings up second. Gentlemen, don't forget number 45, working hard for them dollars. Second down and 18 from the 49-yard line. Minute 40 to go, third quarter. Probably going to be a run again. Here Hammonds. Hammonds on the outside to the left. He gets up in the hall. He got a stiff arm. Dragging people, dragging Tigers with him there for about a gain of seven yards. But it was set second and 18. He got it down up. We're going to get eight yards there. Third down and 10 with looks like about a minute 16 to go here in the third quarter. See if Pigeon Force can get a stop here. So about third and 11 from the 42. Seven, eight yard pickup on that last one and clocks at 60 seconds to go third quarter. Aiki and Hammonds in the backfield surrounding Schultz. We're going to pass. Here comes Schultz. He going to air it out. I see you like inter intercepted. Who was it? Who was it? That was number two, Mr. Prophet, on the interception there for the Tigers. He's been all over the field tonight. That is also. Might be his second interception, I, I'm making sure. No, his first interception tonight comes here with less than a minute to go in the third quarter. Pigeon Forge will have it first and 10 from their 16 yard line. Lots what a big play there. I mean, Profit again comes up big for Pigeon Forge, but they got to do something with the ball now because that was a big play there, what they needed uh, with a turnover, and they got it. 44 seconds to go, third. Here's a pass out here, right side. Caught, but immediately goes down. Clock will continue to run up here at the 19. Pass good for three yards. That was a great catch by Ward. I don't think uh, Biamonte's threw a ball here in a while, so he kind of threw it a little lower. He might have had some yards to run after the catch there. Still good throw and catch. It'll be second down and seven. From the 16 yard line is time winding down here in this third quarter. Biamonte looks to pass and instead is taken down behind the line of scrimmage and time has expired. We've played three quarters. The last one getting ready to be put in the books. 21 to 7. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a moment. Fourth quarter about to begin, 21 to seven. GP holding on to a 14 point edge over the Pigeon Forge Tigers. Pigeon Forge has it in their own territory deep at, the, at their own 14. 
Bob Monte is probably going to throw it again. Here comes Crawford running across the line. Takes the handoff, quick pass. Intercepted. Interception. Intercepted by Gunnar Pittman in for the touchdown. That interception was number 16. Levi Hill on the interception. Pick six for Gunnar Pittman. Big, big play and bad throw by Bob Monte. So 27 to nothing following the pick six by Hill. Yeah, Levi Hill came, read, read the quarterback size. Bob Monte faked that call and threw it right to him. He never even looked him off one time and Levi took it right in for the touchdown. GP is gonna go up here. All the kick is up here, just one second. Oh, it'll be a flag here. <laughs> it's gonna be on Gutmer Pittman here on the extra point. That interception retired unofficially for about about 20 yards or so. So, you know, defensive show been big time. That was a big time for Gutler Pittman. Uh, still a lot of time left here in the fourth quarter, but that was a pretty big shot there. Let's see how they get the extra point in here. Oh, look, they're coming to the line here. Norm, oh, they're going to go for two. Looks like they are. Schultz is going to give it to Akey, and he gets two. Akey for two. That makes it 29-7, 11.52 to go in the game. We'll take another commercial break, and we're back in a minute. So clean, so shiny, your car will look brand new at Clay Bowles Express Shine Car Wash. Choose from a basic car wash to the manager special or purchase a monthly pass where you can go once a day, every day for a month. The neon lights look so cool while your car gets a fantastic wash in just minutes. So get the best car wash in town at Clay Bowles Express Shine Car Wash located on Wears Valley Road right across from Clay Bowles Campground. Open 8 to 8. 11.52 to go, 29-7 following the pick six and the two-point conversion and GP in control in a lot bigger way now. A 22-point advantage over Pigeon Forge. Little squibber picked up around the 20. Out to the 40 and to the 45-46. That was Blake McCarter there on the return there. He did a really good job getting it up on the field for Pigeon Forge. Good field position. Uh, they're going to have to get up on the ball here and get up some points on the board here after that pick six there and then the two-point conversion by Aiki. But uh, I'll tell you what, I still have to make sure we mention to you all how awesome this crowd is here tonight and what a great night for high school football. Um, got a little bit of chills there on how that pick six there, Norm. Really, really enjoying tonight. Great atmosphere, two great teams. Two great communities doing battle and not a better place to be on a Friday night. Here comes Pigeon Forge to the line. Let's see if they put Bob Monte in a place where he can throw it. They're spreading them out. Pass all the way. He's looking left, now moving back right. In pursuit. Here's a long pass downfield, and that one's almost intercepted. I think they're going to get uh, McCarter there on a pass interference, offensive pass interference. He pushed him right in the back to kind of give away an interception there. But, you know, at least he didn't pick, pick it off. But he is going to get an offensive pass interference here, Norm. So that's going to back Pigeon Forge up. They'll replay. Or not replay, rather. They'll be second down. Just heard Aki's name there, Norm. He's yep. on defense, too. He's, he is playing all over the field. So, uh, you know, we've talked about him a little bit. He, he might be getting his name on the board here, uh, offense and defensively. Ball up to the 47, a two-yard pickup. It's going to bring up second and 23. They're in the eye formation again. We've seen play action out of this. Nope, they're going to run it up the middle. It's Hendrick. Big McCarter there. Or McCarter, I'm sorry. Number 34. He powered in there with not, a couple yards. I'm going to mark that just inside Hollander territory to 49. So that's a gain of four. It's going to be third and 23, 19. Third and 19 here. Need to see something down the field. Unfortunately, it's third down. They probably know what's coming, but let's see what they do with Monte here. They got trip to the left. Go, go, go. 
He's looking left, and there's a GP defense. Almost a sack, but he gets it away. And almost a pick by yep. Ethan Estabrook there for the Highlanders. He just barely missed the ball there. It's going to be fourth down. Fourth and long, fourth and 19. So Pigeon Four is going to punt it away with just under 10 to go, trailing by 22. Uh, Monte had a good punt on the last time he did it, so maybe they can pin him deep here. Just time is not going in their favor here with 959 to go in the fourth. A couple of Highlanders back deep to return the Bayamonte punt. Gets another good one off all the way back inside the 10. Oh, and he's got to get it out. Nope, nope. There's a. They whistled it dead when he got into the end zone. I thought he might have touched that ball I before he did it. Exactly. I he the ball, which I thought should have been in the end zone. I thought he did too. You know, a, a, a safety there, but they didn't call. He didn't touch it, or he dropped it, or something. I'm not really sure what they called there, but. Well, our vantage point, just trying to kind of look through the crowd, it was a little tough there in that spot, so. And they don't have review here in high school sport or your high school football here. So go with what the officials say. It's going to be first down and 10 for the Highlanders. From their own 20, there's some movement, and that will draw the laundry on the field. It's going to be offsides there on Pigeon Forge there. He, he, he kind of faked them out there and got them offsides. So first and five, a five-yard pickup via the penalty for the Highlanders. Back to that last play, I thought he touched that ball, but again, I'm not sure if the officials have a better vantage point, like you said, so uh, Highlanders got lucky it wasn't a safety there. Schultz looks like he's maybe changing the play up a little bit or letting it run down. There's a play clock expiring, so. I think they might have got a timeout. Yep, I think so. Don't forget about Claybo's Express Car Wash, a call from across from Claybo's Campground. Make sure you go up there and see it on 410 Wares Valley Road. Check for weekly discounts. Make sure you go see Claybo's Express Car Wash. Five Oaks Tires, carrying top name brands, Michelin Tires and BF Goodwrench Tires. Visit FiveOaksTire.com. Located on 1425 Parkway, Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, or call Five Oaks Tires at 865 453 3469. So, second and five for GP. Hammonds and Aki in the backfield. Uh, on each side of Schultz. He's going to hand it off to Hammonds up the middle. He's got a big, big hole. He has got it out. He beats Profit. He is going to go 40, 30, 20, 10, 5. Touchdown. Hammonds for Gatlinburg Pittman. Puts another score on the board. Profit just about got him with a shoelace tackle, but couldn't bring him down there, Norm. Hammonds scamper 75 yards for. Another TikTok tax service touchdown for Gallenberg Pittman. Oh, Might be another flag. Here. Yep, back here on the 35. We'll see what it is. It must be against Pigeon Forge because they are excited over at Gallenberg Pittman's side. I may, maybe I didn't miss, maybe I didn't understand correctly, but I think I heard player ejection for Pigeon Forge. <laughs> but I I may have misunderstood that. I don't know there. Man, what a big play by Hammonds there. He turned on the afterburners. He really ran past everybody. Profit, every play was right there to almost make that tackle, but he took off, man. I mean, right up the middle. That was definitely probably the dagger there at nine minutes to go here. This uh, field goal attempt to put GP up 36 to seven. Kick is up. Kick will be good. Nine minutes to go, 35-7. The Highlanders over the Tigers. Another commercial break, and we're back in a moment.
Nine minutes to go. 36 to 7, the score. GP up over Pigeon Forge, and we saw Biamonte heading up through the bleachers toward the field house. And like I said, Chris, I think I heard a player ejected. I, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it was. And if that's the case, obviously, Biamonte's been tossed, and I'm not sure exactly why. Well, well I'll just tell you this uh, we've all played in sporting events. This is a high, high intensity game. Uh, it's definitely not good sportsmanship to do anything wrong in the field. I feel sorry for Biamonte. He's a great football player. Should have kept his emotion in check a little bit, but we've all been there. Yeah. And, uh, man, great game, but just, you know, finish out the game strong. Don't be off the sideline for your teammates, but definitely a good play, and we've all been there. I how it feels, but exactly. nothing, nothing bad. I just think he just got upset a little bit. Right. So first and 10 from the 20 for Pigeon Forge, trailing by 29. I really thought the, the, sc the score-wise, the second half was going to be a lot closer. Uh, you know, we talked about momentum there at halftime, and I really thought Pigeon Forge was going to make it closer than what the scoreboard reflects. But um, they played very hard and had some very good defensive stands and some series on offense, too. Yeah, you're right. Now they're going to come in with Mason Schultz, a quarterback here, to finish out these last eight minutes here. Uh, we'll see what he's got here in a big, big game. Uh, but you're right. I definitely thought, you know, it'd be a little bit closer than this coming down the way it started off. And to go back to that ejection, I'm not saying I've ever been ejected from a game, but I've definitely been mad enough to get ejected <laughs> from a game. That's for sure. So. Well, you said it. It's tough for their young men, and, and even as adults, it's hard for us to keep our emotions in check. But for a young man in a situation like this, it's even harder, I think, sometimes. So. That's right. McCarter, yep. Yeah, McCarter on that carry there. Hand off by Schultz. Looks like he picked up about. I think they're going to move the chains here. It's going to be a Krispy Kreme first down. Pigeon Forge gets up there. I think he ran it for about 10, 11 yards there on that pickup. Moves it up to about the 33. Speaking of Krispy Kreme, they are our presenting sponsor tonight. Keep them in mind, you can find them on the Parkway in Pigeon Forge. They're hot and ready. Just look for the hot light daily, 6 to 11 a.m. And then in the evening, if you get a craving, 6 to 10.30 p.m. Here's a big run for the Tigers, moving it into Gatlinburg Pittman territory. That time, uh, Markham, number 32, with a big run. And another Krispy Kreme down at first down. Yeah, that was Markham. I don't know if we've seen him much this today, but he did get a big run there, kind of here in the last few minutes of the game. So, big run. First and 10 from the 42, the Gatlinburg Pittman 42. So, Pigeon Forge not going down without a fight. They're still going to try to put some point, more points on the board. And a flag comes in, defensive side of the ball. We've seen this a lot tonight. That's going to be on pigeon fours. I'm not sure what they called there. Two, three. Look, that's a pretty short five-yard step off by my calculation. But anyway, <laughs> moves it back. There we go. There it is. Yeah. There it yeah. Is. I saw it. Good eyes there, Norm. They're old eyes, but I can still see a little. Here's a handoff left side for the Tigers. That was Markham again up the sideline. He's got some fresh legs. It's two big runs for Markham here. Brings up second down from the 41, about a six-yard pickup, we'll call it. This game is not over with six minutes to go, but just thinking back to the game, like you said in the pregame at halftime, we still haven't seen that pass in offense of Gallimore Pittman or Pigeon Forge, and the score is still 36 to 7 GP, so obviously they can do it either way. Here's a misdirection play right side for the Tigers. That was Holbert there on the carry there, got a couple yards. See so her under a flag here after the play, looks like it's going to be. Gonna be a penalty after the play. Probably extracurricular. Uh, I'm sure it was. Another play. Oh wow. Somebody said something there from Pigeon Forge. Yep. Here's where we want to make sure that you know they just finish out the game strong here. Let's don't finish it ugly here. But again, it's a high emotional game. Totally understand these kids being passionate about what it is, but let's hold your emotions. I think that might have been against Gatlin Pittman, and now it's probably going to be offsetting. Oh, 
Yeah, they'll have to iron this one out. This will might take a minute. I'll yeah. Two or three come out. Here comes. They're still talking out there. Well, he had the initial flag, and then two came in almost simultaneously, and I, I imagine that was whatever was said. Both officials heard it and just at the same time threw the flag. That would be my guess. Well, they're bringing the defense to the side. Well, they, like Warren said, they're going to iron this out. We're going to get the call here in just one second here. They're still talking about it. A lot of flags on the field. As we take this little break, make sure you go see Sevier County Electric Systems up in Sevier County. Also, Carl Hatcher Furniture Store. All your furniture needs there in Sevierville, Tennessee. 6.13 to go, 36-7. to 7. This one's pretty much academic at this point as both teams are huddled up on their respective sidelines. Let's take a quick break. We'll be back in just a moment. At Sevier County Electric System, we know that when the power goes out, it's important to you to have power restored as quickly as possible. That's why we've introduced the Power Action Line. As soon as you call the Power Action Line from a phone associated with your electric service, we know immediately that your power is out. The Power Action Line lets us answer up to 1,200 calls per hour, so we can make sure and identify all outages, even after major storms. We track those outages through our integrated mapping system, which provides our operations center a better understanding of where the affected areas are located and predicts probable starting points that helps our crews begin looking for the problem. Our whole goal is to get your power back on as soon as possible. We'll even call you back to make sure your service has been restored. At Sevier County Electric System, we want to take care of our customers, and that's what we do every day. Sevier County Electric System, we are the power behind our community. Just call 865-774-6300. Six thirteen to go and following the rash of penalties, by our assessment, we're thinking it's a 30-yard mark-off against the Tigers. It's going to be second and 32. And I'm not sure it might not be over here. They're still out there talking, but it's a running play by, looks like, I think, McCarter or Holbert there. They're still talking to each other on the field. Still five minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Well, the best thing to do at, at, at that point, if I'm the coach, I'm just taking those kids out of the game. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, I'm sure you got a lot of people out there. A lot of kids are just passionate. Let's just let's just finish off the game here. Don't get a bunch of penalties here. But well, guess what's happening right here, Norm? You've you've heard it before. I've said it to my boys that when they were playing sports. But in either case, whether you're GP or Pigeon Forge, you got to act like you've been here before. That's right. You're you're exactly right. And I think that's what the coach did there. Uh, coach Watson there took all those players off the field there just to kind of get this game kind of wrapped up here. So looks like they're going to get in the running formation here. Actually, it looks like they might be punting, but it's third and 31. I'm not sure what happened here. I think they might have thought it was fourth down. Unless, uh, I'll be honest, the, the couple of plays before that, uh, the penalty and then the penalties on the last play, um, I called third and 31, but I glanced at the scoreboard. It may be fourth down, and the scoreboard has it wrong, too. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think you're right, Norman. I think we just have confused on the scoreboard, but down on the field on the sideline, they do have fourth down called, so it is going to be a punting situation for our pigeon forwards here. I think overall, Gallagher Pittman is probably the stronger team. I think Pigeon Ford started out uh, good on defense. You know, not much offense. Uh, I think they stuck with them to the first half, 14 to seven at halftime. Came out at halftime and just didn't have enough there. Old GP back, even even with them just running the ball. Well, I think you know we talked about it in the pregame, but um, depth is a big. Uh, I think played a big factor in the game. GP is a lot deeper. Uh, their offensive line, their defensive line, a lot stronger, and you know, you can. Th this happens a lot. You see those big offensive, defensive linemen play a good first or second, first and second quarter, and then the lack of depth comes into play, the inexperience, the size, the lack of size comes into play, and that's where you lose it in the second half. And I think a little bit of that came into play for the Tigers. I totally agree, but don't let the score fool you. Thirty-six to seven. Pigeon Forge have plenty of opportunities to put points on the board. They just did not convert. But 
still a great game and it's been fun to be out here tonight watching this high school football game on a beautiful Friday night up here at Gallagher Pittman. Here's an attempted running play. Well, it was a running play, but it went for a loss back to the 41 for the Highlanders. That time uh, Schultz, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Parton, in there on the tackle. Special announcement, announcement, hot dog, $2. Switching out some players on offense for Gallagher Pittman, too. Looks like Schultz is still in the game for the Highlanders. And Hammonds. Schultz will stay in the gun. He works out of that a lot. Here's a run by number 14. Moves it up. Reagan. Yep, moves it up near about the 48. Reagan on the carry. But still at the same time impressive by Gatlinburg Pittman. They have got a good football team. Obviously they can do it in all phases of the game. Uh, but they showed you tonight they can run the football and still win by a pretty good margin. Or obviously in the first five games they've thrown the ball a lot too. So they can do it both ways that you talked about in the pregame one. Four minutes left. We've got four minutes and 36. Under four minutes to go in this one. Third and eight from the 49 for the Highlanders. And not a flag, but a whistle stops play and a timeout, I believe, by Gatlinburg Pittman. We'll take another commercial break for our fine sponsors. We're back in just a moment to Gallenberg Pittman. Five Oaks Tires, carrying top name brands Michelin Tires and BF Goodwrench Tires. Visit FiveOaksTire.com. Located on 1425 Parkway, Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Or call Five Oaks Tires at 865-453-3469. Fourth and one. Gonna go for it here. Yeah. From the 44-yard uh, line, they'll pick up the first down, the Krispy Kreme Donuts first down and a little bit more. Pigeon Forge crowd, or uh, Gallenberg Pittman crowd, not liking a little physical activity after the whistle. There's still a lot of extra quick <laughs> going on there, even with the second team in there. Uh, but, hey, physical game, rivalry night, I don't expect anything less. Clock rolling under three now. From the 39-yard line, 39-yard line, first down and 10. Oh, they're going to run it again. Quarterback keeper for a loss. Make sure you go by Five Oaks Tire Service at 1425 Parkway, Sevierville, Tennessee. Call them today for all your auto needs at 865-453-3469. Still a big crowd here tonight, Norman. No, I don't think I've seen anybody leave on either side. Uh, Not a packed house here with two minutes to go. Pretty yeah, impressive. Maybe a few people trickle out, but you're right for the most part. Everybody stayed put. Here's Pigeon Forge keeping Gallenberg Pittman staying put. A nice defensive play. That was a big number 33, Jacob Ferguson, on the run. He really pounded it in there, took a, a host of Tigers to knock him down there, trying to kill this clock and stay in bounds. Ferguson on that carry, minute 35 to go now. Again, this reminder, you can see the your high school sports Sevier County game of the week, replayed on Wednesday night, October 4th, 9 o'clock, Charter Channel 180. Pigeon Forge elected not to call any timeouts. Gallagher picked them. Pittman elected to just run the ball. Minute 14 to go. Clock is still ticking. It's going to be fourth down. Sixty seconds to go in this one. And they can run it down. Play clock at 25, 24, so they can run it down a little bit more. 
We'll have your full recap here at the end of the game with all your stats here on your high school sports. But, Norm, it's been a good one, man. I enjoyed being here with you tonight and enjoying this awesome environment. It's been a, been a really good game. It's been a blast. I always enjoy being able to fill in and being a part of the crew. We're out there with you. GP keeps it on the ground. Moves it a little deeper near the 35-yard line. Reagan on, the Reagan on the bounds there. I think maybe about to stop the clock. We also want to thank our cameraman, Chris Reddick, tonight. He's done a fantastic job here running the camera here. Appreciate Chris. I think Chris, Chris's favorite part is when he goes in the crowd and gives away donuts. I, I think it is. He was there out there earlier not wearing the hat. He really got involved in the student section here at Pigeon Forge. Well, the clock's at triple zero, so this one is in the books. 36 to seven, your final, as GP beats Pigeon Forge here on their home turf. And that's gonna do it for this one. Right now, we'll take a break. When we come back, the post-game recap, we'll have statistics, name the offensive, defensive player of the game as well as the play of the game. All that and more, stay with us. We're back in just a little bit. Mmm, just look at all those freshly made Krispy Kreme donuts. I'm sure it makes you want one or a dozen right now. So come visit our locally owned and operated Krispy Kreme Donuts in Pigeon Forge. Our Krispy Kreme Donuts are made fresh daily, our service is fast and friendly, and the taste will put a smile on anyone's face. Krispy Kreme is a fundraising favorite, so call us today to help support your school or community fundraising efforts. Our delivery truck is there when you need us. Krispy Kreme Donuts on the Parkway in Pigeon Forge. Pittman High School, Norman Plumley, Chris Blevins, 36 to 7. The Highlanders put one in the books, a big region matchup against Pigeon Forge tonight, and they take care of business. Uh, looked like it was going to be close in the first half, and it was close, but GP opened it up in the second half. Real quickly, uh, Highlanders got on the board in the first quarter. Um, it was Ethan Eastbrook uh, scoring on an 18-yard pass to go up 7 to nothing. 135 left in the first quarter. Pierce Hammonds goes in from three yards out, 14 to nothing GP. And then a 97-yard kickoff return from Quentin Prophet from Pigeon Forge makes it 14 to seven. That was where our intermission took place. At that point, like I said, very good ball game. Pigeon Forge had some momentum. GP comes out in the third quarter, 520 left. Uh, Pierce Hammonds goes in from 16 yards to make it uh, 21 to seven. And then with 11.52 in the fourth, Levi Hill intercepts a pass, scampers 20 yards, a pick six, they go for two, puts them up 29 to seven, and then once again, Mr. Hammonds, he uh, goes 75 yards, an 80 yard drive in three plays, took him 46 seconds, and Hammonds scampers the last 75 yards to bring us to 36 to seven. That's a good segue. We talked about Pierce Hammonds, and we need to talk about our offensive player of the game. Brought to you by Buddy's Barbecue. A great segue for that. Yeah, Pierce Hammonds did everything on the field tonight. He ran the Wildcats tonight. He also ran the ball. He had a great, great night. 129 yards rushing the ball tonight. Three touchdowns. And they were kind of quiet except for the big 75 yard right. run he had. But they were all big on the scoreboard. Uh, I thought he did an awesome job of controlling the offense. Schultz didn't pass the ball tonight, but a handful of times. And Hammonds had the ball a lot in his hands, which makes him our offensive player of the game through Buddy's Barbecue. Carl Hatcher furniture kind enough to sponsor our defensive player of the game and a lot of times when you watch a high school college or, foot, or pro football game that defensive player comes from the winning team as well we've went a different direction lots of options but tell them who we went with Chris we went with Mr. Pippen there for Pigeon Force tonight he was involved in almost 70 to 80 percent of all the tackles out there unofficially I can give you a number of how many tackles he had but he was involved in a lot of plays I think he was calling a lot of plays on defense he just must be the captain of the defense there. Pigeon Force cannot be without Mr. Pippen there on defense. Sevier County Electric System sponsors our play of the game and we talked about that a little bit off camera uh, before our post game show here. We thought real quickly that to uh, to give it to uh, to Pierce Hammonds that 16 yard run that put him up 21 to 7 but at that point it's a two score game. Pigeon Forge is really still in it. We talked about it and felt like that that Levi Hill pick six and then the two-point conversion really took the wind out of Pigeon Forge sales. And uh, so our play of the game, 
uh, courtesy of Levi Hill from Gatlinburg Pittman. Chris, any last parting thoughts? Well, I, I want to say one last thing we said during the broadcast. What an awesome night for high school football. Perfect weather. Great crowd on hand. Really enjoyed it, Norm. Tremendous, tremendous night. Great.